I will discuss the values of x for which the cubic function x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 1 is either increasing or decreasing. Now, what I will do first of all is get the turning points of this function. That is the values of x for which the derivative of the function is equal to 0. Now the derivative of the function, which I'm sure you know, is the slope of a tangent to the graph of the function at some value x. So for this particular function, it turns out that the slope of a tangent at x equals 1 is 0. We have a horizontal line at x equals 1, and the slope of a horizontal tangent is 0. So f prime at 1 is 0. Similarly, the derivative of f at x equals 3, or f prime at 3, is 0. So we have turning points at x equals 1 and at x equals 3. That's true for this cubic function. Now, um, not all cubic functions have turning points. Some cubic functions don't have turning points. Um, to find the turning points, what we would have to do is solve this equation here. So we differentiate this function. We get 3x squared minus 12x plus 9, put the derivative equal to 0. We solve this quadratic equation. We can factorize it or use the formula. The solutions you will get are x equals 1 or x equals 3. Turns out that this has solutions, so that means we do have turning points, but it's quite possible, of course, that this quadratic equation does not have, have solutions, so the cubic function has no turning points, so it won't look like this. Um, a cubic function could look like this. You know, this function here has no turning points, which means that the derivative has no solutions. We could then go on and get the coordinates of the two turning points. If we know the x values of the turning points, we can easily get the y values by just evaluating the function at x equals 1 and at x equals 3. If we calculate f of 1, plug 1 into this here, we get 3. So we have the point 1, 3. That's this point here. If we plug 3 in for x in our function, we get the point 3 minus 1. That's this point here. Knowing these two points, we can draw a rough sketch of the curve. Because this point is higher than this point here, we see that this point here must be a local maximum. Which means that this one down here is a local minimum. Now, suppose we are interested in values of x for which f of x is increasing. Now, what does it mean for a function to be increasing? Well, you, ne you need to imagine moving along the x-axis from minus infinity. So imagine walking along the x-axis from minus infinity up as far as plus 1. You will see that the curve is going up. So we can see that for all values of x that are strictly less than 1, the curve is increasing. By the way, this curve keeps moving away from the y-axis indefinitely. Um, it's not approaching some asymptote. So for example, when x is minus a million, we will have some value on the curve. Now let's take a particular value that is less than 1. Let's take x equals a half and go up to the curve and look at the derivative of the function at x equals a half. That means look at the slope of the tangent to the graph at x equals a half. Well, this tangent here has a positive slope. Lines going in this direction have positive slopes. In other words, if we take any point on the curve, increase x by some amount, then y we need to increase y by a certain amount to meet the curve. So when x increases, y increases. The slope of the curve at x equals a half is the same as the slope of the tangent to the curve at x equals a half, which is f prime of a half, which will be some positive value. If you want to calculate it, you can plug a half in here. You will get some positive number. The bigger that positive number, the steeper this line is, the bigger the slope. Now we do not include x equals 1 in our range of values because, because at x equals 1 the derivative is equal to 0. We don't want that. We want the derivative um, to be greater than 0. So the condition for f of x to be increasing is that the derivative over that those values of x is greater than 0. So we would be solving this quadratic inequality here. Now, 
x less than 1 is not the only range of values of x for which f prime of x is greater than 0. You can see that for values of x that are greater than 3, then f of x will be increasing. So again, you need to imagine walking along the x-axis from x equals 3 up to plus infinity. You will see the curve rising or increasing. So let's look at a particular value. Let's look at x equals 4. Look at a particular value of x that is greater than 3. If we look at the slope of the curve at x equals 4, f prime of 4 is greater than 0. We get a line with a positive slope. It doesn't matter which value of x we take that's greater than 3. If we took x equals 7 and went up to the curve, we would have a tangent with a positive slope to the curve but not at x equals 3. We exclude x equals 3 because at x equals 3 the slope of the tangent is 0. We have a horizontal tangent at x equals 3. So we just circle out that value. So the solution to this quadratic inequality is x less than 1 and x greater than 3. Another way that we could solve this quadratic inequality is to draw a graph of the quadratic function 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. So th here's the graph of f prime of x. Now we know because it's quadratic it's got a u-shape, it's a parabola, it's an upright parabola because the x squared term is positive. And this graph crosses the x-axis at plus 1 and plus 3, as we saw earlier. The solutions of the quadratic equation are x equals 1 and x equals 3. Now, we are interested in the values of x for which f prime of x is greater than 0. In other words, the values of x for which the graph is above the x-axis. So I'll shade in the parts of the graph that are above the x-axis. You can see that for those parts, the corresponding x values are all values of x less than 1 and all values of x greater than 3. In other words, if we pick any value of x that's less than 1, um, the value of f prime of x will be positive because we have to go up to meet the graph up above the x-axis. Similarly, if we pick any value of x greater than 3, uh, the, the y value or the f prime of x value will be positive. Finally, let's consider the values of x for which f of x is decreasing. Well, again, you must imagine moving from left to right along the x-axis. And if you're moving from x equals 1 to x equals 3, you will see the curve going down. So this section of the curve is the section for which f of x is decreasing. And we exclude x equals 1 and x equals 3. We have stationary values at x equals 1 and x equals 3. These points, local max and local min, are sometimes referred to as stationary points. So we can see that for values of x between 1 and 3, f prime of x is decreasing. We can also see it on this graph here. We want the section of the graph wh whose negative f prime of x, which is negative f prime of x values. So that's the part of the graph that's below the x-axis. And the x values that give a negative f prime of x are these x values here, between plus 1 and plus 3. Let's just look at the derivative of f at a particular value of x in this region. Let's look at this value here, 1 and a half, or 3 over 2. So we go up to the graph at x equals 3 over 2. And where we hit the graph, we consider the tangent. The slope of the tangent at x equals 3 over 2 is the same as the slope of the graph, or the function at x equals 3 over 2. And you can see that the slope of this tangent here is negative. So the slope of the graph at this point, or the slope of the tangent at this point, is the derivative of the function at 3 over 2, and it's going to be negative. The line is going in this direction. 
So we would be solving the inequality f prime of x less than 0 to find the values of x for which f of x is decreasing. Now, in the next video, I will um, talk about the second derivative of a function. So we'll see that the second derivative is denoted by f double dash or double prime of x or d2y dx2. We will explain what this means geometrically, what it means in terms of the shape of the graph of a function, and I will use this exact example again.